Once upon a time, the infamous rover Renardo plundered the floating isles. Then his mother called him to her deathbed. Swear to me that you won't die on the gallows. She rasped. Reluctantly, he swore. And he whiled away his days at home with music, cards, and wine. But the Emperor had changed. He'd been good once, a shy, almost humble toad. He'd built universities. But then people started whispering about mass graves in the woods, midnight rituals, victims screaming. The Imperial Ravens would round up entire villages, and no one ever returned. The Ravens had come to Ubar scouting for ancient books said to be of great power. But the librarians had hidden the books, so they'd burnt the librarians. The citizens, outraged, had driven them off. The Ravens had come back with dropships. The kid had fled with one of those books. He was brave and dumb and wanted to join the rebellion. And Bernardo had promised his mother he'd protect him. The kid was looking down, watching his city burn. Sorry, kid, Renato told the kid. Look, if we give them the book, they'll leave you alone. My mother died for this book! I promised her I'd protect you. Oh, damn it. The kid had run off. With the book, of course. So Renato had to run after him. Once upon a time, the infamous rover Renardo plundered the floating isles. Then his mother called him to her deathbed. Swear to me that you won't die on the gallows. She rasped. Reluctantly, he swore. And he whiled away his days at home with music, cards, and wine. But the emperor had changed. He'd been good once, a shy, almost humble toad. He'd built universities. But then people started whispering about mass graves in the woods. Midnight rituals, victims screaming. The Imperial Ravens would round up entire villages, and no one ever returned. The Ravens had come to Ubar scouting for ancient books said to be of great power. But the librarians had hidden the books. So they'd burnt the librarians. The citizens, outraged, had driven them off. The Ravens had come back with dropships. The kid had fled with one of those books. He was brave and dumb and wanted to join the rebellion. And Renardo had promised his mother he'd protect him. The kid was looking down, watching his city burn. Sorry, kid. Renato told the kid. Look, if we give them the book, they'll leave you alone. My mother died for this book! I promised her I'd protect you. Ah, oh, damn it. The kid had run off. With the book, of course. So Renato had to run after him. The two ravens were staring at the kid like he was their dinner, which probably was what was in their tiny brains. Hey, Renato said. They cocked their heads at him. Pick on someone as ugly as you. Wait, that didn't come out right. For the Emperor! The ravens cawed and rushed at him. Dropship flew overhead. He hoped they hadn't noticed him. The kid. Oh, right. 
the gate of heroes. Someone's idea of a joke, making the Skyship Docks a gated community. You needed a hero's sword to open it. And the kid was on the other side of the gate. Who let you through? Promise me you'll take the book to the rebels. Or I'm going to steal your ship. I'm not taking that damn book anywhere. And neither are you. Try and stop me, laughed the kid. I bet you don't even have a hero sword. And with that, the kid hopped away. Had to hand it to the kid. He was an idiot, but he had guts. Where was Renata going to get a hero sword? Or and win. Perfect. A hero sword. QED. This is what he got for settling down and finding people to care about. The kid's mum had been a swell cook and she'd laughed at Bernardo's jokes. He didn't even know he'd made one. And then the ravens had come to burn her. And she'd made him promise to protect the kid. But she never told him where the book was. Just the kid. He came up to a ledge. It was too far to jump. There'd been a bridge here before, hadn't there? And there was Peter, giggling at him. How'd you get across? He asked the kid. Where'd you find a hook? I hopped, said the kid. Wise-ass kid. Hey, look out behind you. Cute, said Renato. Ah, oh, ravens. It was time to toss some sense into the kid. Just hook his way across the ledge and chase the kid down. Thing was, he hadn't used his hook since he'd retired. How would he have done it? Maybe if he meditated at that altar there, he'd remember his old skills. It was starting to come back to him. Something you never completely forgot, like how to freeze time when attacking. The more he fought, the more he'd probably remember. And there was the Farfarer. She was the fastest ship he'd ever known. She could do the Kestrel run in 12 furlongs. Oh, so the salesman told him. And something told him the kid was about to walk into an ambush. Stop! He shouted. I'm not giving you the book! Shouted the kid and took off. No! Peter! The kid ran for it. And a goggler nailed him with its eyes. book was unburned. Next to it were the buckles from the kid's shoes and a kid-sized pile of ashes. Damn it. Why hadn't he lied and told the kid he'd take the book to the rebels? The kid would be alive now. Really pissed off and betrayed, but alive. Oh, damn it. Renato picked up the book. He couldn't let the Empire have it now. He was going to have to get it out of there. He'd be a wanted man. Probably have to join the rebellion just to have a place to dock. Well, he'd hated home life anyway. What was the big deal about this book anyway? Maybe he should open it and find out. All that had been years ago. How many? The war was a blur. And now three raven scout ships. The rebellion was out of time. Unless Renardo could bring a game changer. Maybe he could. Renardo had found out where he could find the pieces of the Sky Ripper, the legendary weapon that had exiled the lost gods. Surely a legendary weapon could win the final battle. On the other hand, his old friend Lupino had sent Renardo a desperate message saying he had a brilliant scheme to save the rebellion. If Renardo could only rescue him. Renardo dived the Farfarer towards the Abyss. As he felt the heat of the jet stream, the Raven ships peeled off, not stable enough to follow him down there. Now it was time to choose. Lapino or the Sky Ripper.
Mapino had apparently managed to confuse the judge by arguing that he hadn't actually stolen a winged horse. He'd only sold it. But wait, where was the prison? The village was empty. Had, had everybody fled the ravens? The ravens had taken the town. Renato had seen villages empty like this. All the people taken away to be sacrificed in the Emperor's secret rituals. Renato hoped the people were just hiding. He wasn't that good. Yet. Ravens were landing everywhere. The advance guard. He'd better get moving. If they got to Lupino first, they'd eat him for breakfast. Or a snack. Ravens weren't picky. If they got hungry, they sometimes forgot to interrogate their prisoners. Even t it was starting to come back to him. Something you never completely forgot. Like how to freeze time in an attack. The more he fought, the more he would probably remember. Renato had learned so much, it was time to turn it into something he could use. Dirty and bloody, Renato finally reached Lapino. The rabbit was practicing his shuffle. We capture Zenobia, we find out what she knows, and that's the whole war right there. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Capture the Emperor's greatest general, who also happened to be a deadly sorcerer and oh, his only daughter? That would be worth it. On the other hand, he could still get to the core of the Sky River, even if he couldn't get the whole thing. It must have great power. It's beautiful here, thought Renato. He was thrilled to be back with his old war buddy. He'd missed the mad rabbit, but something was not quite right. There was something sour in the air. Like the earth had ruptured over something that had been fermenting for a very long time. Renato felt wrong all over. He could feel an almost palpable sickness in the air. And if the land could have tumors, it would look like these monstrous crystals. The forest is quiet and empty. We're in a few birds. He didn't catch a raven. Renato smelled sick animals and dying. No help. I'm getting a bad feeling about this, Renato thought. Maybe Lapina was right. Maybe they should have kidnapped... As he held the radiant icosahedron, Renato felt queasy, like dozens of tiny... Tell you what, said Lapino. I'll take it to the observatory. You attack the Imperial Outpost. The Imperial Outpost was a vital communications node. 
Taking it could shatter the Empire's ability to coordinate. And it would be full of secret plans and maps and maybe even rebel prisoners. It was a good target for a hero like Renardo. But what if Lupino got the core and then broke it or lost it? Or worse, was Renardo ready to take that risk? Maybe it was better if he brought the core to the scientists himself. As Lupino vanished into the wilds of the Nexus, Renato vaguely remembered Lupino had a baby daughter, didn't he? And he told her mother he was going out to get some Easter eggs, and he'd never come back. But Renato was relieved not to carry the core anymore. He was already feeling better. And who knows, maybe this time Lupino would get it right. And if Renato could take the outpost, he'd have access to all the Empire's communications in the sector. Right? Renardo caught his breath. His joints still hurt, but he couldn't feel the poison in his system anymore. He let the armature slip out of his hands to save his friend Lupino. Of course he had to let Lupino take the core. The rebellion needed every man doing his duty. And the rabbit would be no good taking on an Imperial outfit, right? Renardo took the outpost with a song in his heart. Soon, he was stuffing his sack with key messages from and to the fleet. Then the fire speaker toad chortled a new message. The observatory had been sacked by ravens. Lapino and all the scientists had been taken to the mountains. Why? Why had he trusted Lapino again? And now the Empire had the core. Renardo hailed the rebel base to warn them. But their far speaker didn't close back. Was the base under attack too? There were Imperials everywhere in the ruins. And dead civilians. The Ravens were killing everything in sight. Renato was relieved to see no rebels among the dead. Maybe the secret base was still secret. But there were huge burn marks on buildings. What? monstrous weapon was the Empire using here. The core had great power, and they harnessed it somehow, even though they didn't have the armature. Renato felt ready to become faster, strong. He could smell charred flesh and hear screams. The ruins were on fire, but the Ravens had rigged up the core as some kind of burning ray. They wouldn't need to know the secret location. They were burning everything. It was killing them, too. Their black feathers littered the path. He would have to take the core from them. It was the last thing he wanted to do. As the last raven fell, Renardo felt worse than he ever had. The core was killing him, again. The council members cautiously came out into the smoke. You saved us, croaked the speaker. They would put the weaponized core deep in a cavern, she promised, where its poison could harm no one. They would heal him if they could, she said. No, it's a weapon now. We need one. 
I'll lead the charge. It will kill you, croaked the speaker. I guess it already has, Renato said. She bobbed her head gravely. When all this is over, she said, we'll name our new capital city for you. He flew towards the Imperial fleet, a myriad ships in disciplined formation, waiting for the signal to destroy the rebellion forever. Behind him, the rebels were charging. If he failed, they would die. And so the final battle began. Everything hurt. It was unpleasant to fight this way. With each blow he struck with his sword, he felt weaker. Yet each time the core fired, it got brighter. As if the heat for the burning ravens and buildings only fed its hunger. He wondered where Lupino was. Wasn't he supposed to be in the battle? No. He'd been captured, hadn't he? Oh, Renato's mind was smoky now, like the burning fleet. He hoped this wouldn't take long. Who needed bridges, anyway? Major uh, Lando Nardo. If they were going to name a capital city after him, well, he just wished he had a better name. Where was Lupino? He missed Lupino's bitter appetite. Lupino had gotten him into this mess, hadn't he? was a wonderful weapon that swept fire across the fleet. Ravens exploded in its gaze, and with every heartbeat it grew brighter. He would die. But he would die every inch a hero. Spectacularly, changing history like the legendary heroes of lore. Or was it your? <laughs> Renato fell to his knees. The Emperor's bodyguards were lined up before his ship. Fierce ravens, all. And Zenobia. She was conjuring. He could